Inland Wetlands, Inland Wetlands and Conservation Committee public meeting, Wednesday, July 21st, 2021 at 730. This is a virtual meeting in accordance with governor's, uh, the governor's executive order. Um, we have uh, public comment today, Derek? No one had contacted me for comments tonight. Okay. So with that being said, um, we'll start with our first application, application number 734-21, Winding Brook Turf Farm, Inc., Great Plains Lane, parcel number 279-001 and 279-003. At this time, um, may the applicant uh, present to uh, our commission, please. Uh, members of the commission, uh, for the record, my name is Kevin Johnson. I'm with the engineering firm of Close Jensen and Miller. Um, just a quick recap from our May meeting. Uh, the applicant is proposing, um, oh, ex excuse me for a minute. Derek, could, could I share the screen? Yes, I'll add you as, uh, let me, Set that up. Okay, try it now, Kevin. <clears throat> okay, I'm I'm sorry. Um, just a quick recap from uh, our May meeting. Uh, the applicant is proposing to construct a uh, Quonset style uh, storage building uh, for storage of farming equipment. Um, this would be for, you know, activities during farming operations. Um, the site is located on Great Plain Road. It is within the floodplain of Beaver Brook. Uh, as we had discussed, uh, there is grading activity uh, within the floodplain. Uh, the, the activity results in a net increase uh, of flood storage of approximately seven cubic yards. Uh, so we have no net loss of flood storage. Uh, also at the May meeting, uh, the commission uh, inquired whether any of the proposed activity impacted uh, the wetland areas. Um, there, there were uh, mapped wetland uh, units uh, by town mapping in the area. Uh, subsequent to that meeting, the applicant hired a soil scientist uh, who went out to the site, uh, flagged the wetlands. Uh, we surveyed those wetland limits by survey instrument, uh, plotted them on the mapping. That's indicated by the green line. Uh, basically, the wetland areas are confined uh, to the forested area just to the south of the uh, agricultural field there. And the wetlands are basically at the tall slope. Uh, so none of the proposed activity uh, being proposed is, is within any wetland area uh, and, and in fact is much higher in elevation. Uh, we did resubmit uh, the plans uh, with the wetlands uh, and, and the uh, wetland soil scientist report uh, to town staff. Uh, I believe we've uh, responded to any questions and concerns. Um, and at this point, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, any of the commission members may have. Thank you, Kevin. Um, thank you, Mr. Morgan, for uh, coming back and taking a look at that. Um, seeing and uh, the mapping has changed a bit, and there is an increase in storage. Is always a good thing. I was, I'm all set with what I see. Any other commissioners have any comments? Uh, I'd just like to agree with you, Brian. Um, my concern was where were the wetlands and, uh, you know, they did what they needed to do to locate them and uh, where they're building is not going to be involved in that. And like you said, they had the flood storage accounted for. So looks okay to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, uh, this is Lou, I don't think I have any other uh, questions on that. And Brian, you want me to make a motion? 
Yeah, if you could, please. Okay, uh, I move to um, approve uh, application number 734-21, Winding Brook Turf Farm Incorporated, Great Plains Road, Lane, parcels number 279-001 and 279-003. Do we have a second? I'll second it, Ms. Brent. Okay, you will take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Have a nice evening. You too. Thank you. At this time, we'll have... Uh, Application number 736-21. Um, Matt, I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to pronounce your last name in the town of Weathershield, parcel number 140-001. Application to install channel stabilization measures within a regulated wetland area. You can uh, present for us, please. Uh, my name is Matthew Ayasi. Uh, I live at 266 Hang Dog Lane. Uh, my parents own the property. Uh, however, I stay here. I take care of everything. Uh, I take care of the bills, the house. Um, so I was in my backyard weed whacking. Uh, this was back over COVID. Uh, and I actually fell into the brook. Uh, part of the backyard gave way. Um, so I started uh, doing a gabion fence. Uh, I brought stone down by hand. They ranged from 80 pounds to 300 pounds. Uh, there's approximately 42 stones. Uh, it went from the front of the culvert all the way to the backyard. Uh, I, the plan was to hold back the bank uh, with gabion and stone uh, to prevent the abravites and the bank from eroding any further. Um, I did have to dig out the first 30 feet of the brook, uh, approximately four and a half inches back in order to line the stones up correctly. Uh, the back 80 feet was already eroded really bad where if you took your hand and you stuck it in, uh, it would go up to your elbow. Um, so I started that project not knowing that I needed a permit. Um, everything, everything has since been removed out of the brook the best that I can. Mm -hmm. um, Part of the abravites, uh, the bulbs, the roots for the abravites, some of them are still down there. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to pull them out with my truck. I could not do it. Um, mm -hmm. So I was talking with Derek to uh, see what, uh, what we could do in terms of reinforcing it. Mm -hmm. um, I am willing to cover some of the costs. Uh, I can't afford to cover all of the costs, but I'm willing to uh, put in some money, uh, whether you guys pay for everything and you guys send me the bill, uh, you know, partial, uh, you know, I'll cover partial for the bill. Um, I spent five grand on materials, which are currently sitting in my backyard and I have no idea what to do with them. Um, any thoughts? Well, un unfortunately you did this work in a regulated area. And as far as I know, it was in uh, it's, it was on town property, so it just makes a uncomfortable situation. Um, yep. And the eroding isn't a good thing, and it just hurts downstream uh, to add to it. I know yep. you've been communicating with uh, t town staff, and uh, that's good. Have you looked at what uh, Derek has provided uh, to yes. re restore the area? Uh, he mentioned using uh, riprap, a soil blanket, and about 20 yards of uh, top uh, topsoil. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not uh, I'm not sure what's what's going on. Um, again, I want to put forth some money because I had already started. Um, I'm not able to cover the full cost. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the total project, I think, uh, for what I was doing uh, was just over five grand. 
that was with the gabion baskets the stone and then the backfill stone um i'm i'm trying to price out the rip wrap and everything um Right, but that all that material was on was on town property. That was that's the problem. Um, any other commissioners have anything to say? They have any idea? The, yeah, I mean the basic idea is to kind of get it back where it was, but protected so that the stream won't mm -hmm. erode it anymore. That's that's what you're gonna. So what you're proposing here, or what the town's proposing, is somewhat less than what you originally planned, right? Uh, correct. So originally uh, in the front, the, the bank went all the way down to the water. And what I did is I took four and a half inches back so that the gabion yeah. fence sat flush all the way back, you know, right to the right to the dirt. Uh, in the back section, it was just a huge drop off and uh, the uh, the bank was actually eroded into where you could put your elbow yeah. to it. Um, now, in, yeah. in terms of what I did, there was already uh, an island of sorts. There was a grass patch right at the, the base of all that. So you had your drop off and there was a little grass patch and that that ran most of the way. So I added a little dirt just to make it flat to put the stone on. Um, yeah, I, I went over and then, you know, parked on the street and took a look down. It, it's pretty much a mess right now. Um, yeah, right, it's... Now you're going to be able to get that stone out of there. The town's going to be able to get it out. Um, so I have, uh, I believe there's 10 pieces of uh, blue stone that are left to come out. Yeah. Um, I, I left them for now uh, only because I work full time. So I, yeah. I've been exhausted. I've been overworked. And uh, so they're, they're still down there. Um, I could take them out at any time. I just wanted to wait for the meeting uh, to see what you yeah. guys had to say. Okay, so the, the stone and the rebar, all that stuff's going to be gone, and then you're going to be putting in the riprap and the um, the uh, seed mixture that uh, Eric's talking about, right? Yeah, um, okay. I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not sure if if uh, if you guys are are paying for it and you're going to bill me, or if I have to put up cash up front. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure on that, or if, or if I'm responsible for the whole thing. Yeah. But, no, uh, I, that, that's not our decision to make. Right. I, you in the town. Correct, Brent. Right. I agree with that. All right. Okay. All right. So so you're basically going to restore it in so far as possible to what it was and try and prevent the erosion. Okay. That's all I got. Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm planning on doing the rip wrap and everything. So, uh, Again, you, you did take a look at the uh, map that uh, town staff did provide you with their suggestions on how to, how to repair it, correct? Yeah, uh, I've been back and forth uh, with Derek regarding everything. Um, he sent me a list of all the materials needed. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, and, I have that all covered. I've been looking into the materials. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and you guys have been talking, you guys have, town staff and yourself have been discussing cost and who's going to take the cost? Uh, correct. I, I had mentioned uh, that I, unfortunately uh, I do not have all the funds to to do all of it myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do have some cash that I, I can put up um, or if uh, if you guys do it and you guys can send me a bill for you know half of it or, or however you guys want to do it. Um, I know for, for me personally, uh, if I have to pay for the whole thing, it's, it's going to probably take me a month to do it. Right. I, I, I'm not, we're not going to, we're not here to discuss the financial who's doing it. We have the ability to yeah. set fines. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking to fine anybody. I'm just looking to right. restore the area. Um, I, I reviewed uh, Mr. Gregor's um restoration plan to help you get it going. I, I, I like it. Yeah. Um, it is, it is the thing that we need to do. We need to jump on this relatively quick. Um, my, one of my suggestions would have been maybe, uh, with the sill fence or in lieu of the sill fence, we can put some, uh, hay bales there and stake them just because it looks like when that water gets rolling, uh, it takes a lot of the, uh, bank 
uh, with it for you know eroding from so that would probably help us as it's being restored uh -huh. but um i'm i'm not we're, i i i'm not here to discuss or look at financially who's the burden is going to be on um we're looking at an application to restore something that was disturbed in the regulated area um and um, with you saying that you have reviewed what the town proposed, um, um, I wonder if any of the other commissioners have any other comments before we put this to a vote. Uh, again, I, I like what was proposed and uh, I'm willing to do uh, any any suggestions you guys have about uh, doing it? And as long as it gets done, I, I have a uh, four-year-old. Her today's her birthday, and she's always here, and, and she likes going over there. So it's it's a safety on that as well. So mm -hmm. when you know, if I can get it done as fast as I can, that's that's the goal. Mm -hmm. So Brian, just uh, to, to interject, yeah, I've been speaking with uh, Matt about options for covering the cost of this. Um, I've spoken with physical services that they, they will do the work. Um, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to leave it up to myself and Sally Katz and uh, Matt to kind of work out how payment's going to work. I know Matt has offered to, uh, at this point, cover the cost of the riprap stone, um, which is essentially going to restore the area that he impacted the most. Um, you know, I think the town being a town channel on town property, uh, I think there were some issues out there to begin with that needed to be addressed. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, he, you know, he took it upon himself to do it. We, we would have addressed it ourselves coming through the commission. But I think at this point, um, at least as far as I know, physical service is going to get the work done as soon as they can. And uh, we'll work with him directly on, um, you know, restoration costs and how we want to work that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does any other commissioners have any comments uh, before we vote? Is, uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Um, this is Brent. Make a motion to approve application number 736-21, Matt Ayassi and Town of Wethersfield parcel number 140-001, which is to install the channel stabilization measures within a regulated wetland area. Um, Do, do we have a second? No, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on to application number 737-21, Maribel Almonte, 47 Spruce Street, parcel number one. 21-032, application to remove construction materials and restore a regulated wetland and, fl and floodplain area. If the applicant could uh, present to us, please. Hi. Hi, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, I'm Maribel. So yes, I'm property owner of 47 Spruce Street, not 16. Mm -hmm. um, I want to start by saying that, um, first of all, this was an honest mistake on my part. And I have to tell you that when we purchased the property back in 2000, um, I was married. And back then, you know, I didn't handle any of the paperwork or anything, to be honest with you. With this project, I have discovered that I own wetland that is actually on the blueprint of the house. Um, and, you know, my mistake was that we started this project. One, you know, I decided to put up this pool because I have my first grandchild and, you know, with this whole COVID thing, I, we weren't able to go out. So we said, okay, we're going to put up a pool. I contacted several um, contractors, but no one ever showed up, which probably would have saved me from all this because they have experience. And, um, but anyway, so my significant other, you know, he, um, he does construction and we say, you know, so as a family project, let's just start the project and, and see what we when we go from there. When we began the project, we 
you know, we fig I figured, all right, so we haven't put up the entire pool. Let me go get the permit now. Because, again, naive of myself, I'm not aware of anything um, about the wetland, and I wasn't aware that I needed to go get the permit first, and I want to apologize for that sincerely. Um, then when I went, I said, okay, so if, if they come by to, to approve me the, 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 the permit, they'll see that the, it, where everything is so far, not knowing that, again, I was placing things on, um, on wetland. I, um, I have all the interest to put everything back the way you guys instructed me to do it because it is with no malice that I want to leave that the way it is. I don't want to leave that for the children and I don't want it to be a, um, a problem for, for us either. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know, I was reading on the part that says the trench, you know, but I, I'm, I'm aware that when we purchased that, I think that that was, that was already there, that was already part of our backyard. All we did with that was that um, we cleaned it up because there was, you know, from room 15, we get a lot of people who throw things down from their cars and everything starts coming down this way. So again, it was a, a project and we said, all right, so let's just start cleaning things down. But it wasn't that we were building anything as far as the trench that takes the water down to the other side. Um, so I'm just here, you know, again, it was an honest mistake on my part. And I am here to repair and do as you guys tell me. I would like to still install the pool if I'm able to. And according to the rules and regulations, like I want to put it exactly where I am allowed to do it. And um, I, want, I want to be compliant with the town rules. So you guys take it from there because at this point, I'm just here to do whatever you guys think is right. Okay, thank you. Um, have, have you. Have you looked at the suggestions that the town provided? Yes, I did. To... I did. I saw that um, it said that um, we need to restore the, what was it, the, I'm sorry. Uh, and then I had it right here. I think you guys are giving me up to September to, um, first of all, I know I need to remove the material. That yeah. was placed in the wetland. So that we haven't touched it again ever since um Zara came over. I mm -hmm. we just froze, you know. I said, all right, let's wait till we have the meeting. When you guys tell me right there, but go ahead and do it. That's when we're gonna start doing whatever you guys tell me to do. We will remove the material. Mm -hmm. Um, it says to restore the the area. So I want to know in detail what does that consist of. So again, I I'm compliant and I do what the town is expected me to do. And also, uh, it says here that we are to, I guess, to seed the area again with the proper wetland mix seed, which is also, as long as I know where to get it from, which ones to get, we would do as you say. Mm -hmm. and, and that's basically it. And, and then again, we, we started installing a fence. That's another thing I want to mention. And I want to know how far down to the wetland area are we allowed to have the end of the fence. You know, that's another thing that was one of my concerns because I don't want it to be above the wetland again. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. Well, as, as far as this application, we're looking to restore what you have disturbed. And what the town staff has proposed is starting with removing the S the soil pile back there by the drainage channel, okay. and re in removing the in removing the uh, construction materials in, in the pool out of the uh, regulated area. Install okay. installing silt fence, and planting the conservation mix that uh, is I think that is provided in this packet or town staff could uh, provide with you. Um, to provide to you. Right, um, yes, I did see that. And I saw a website as well and information of where to get it from. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm, um, I have up to September because it isn't, it's not the right time to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. I appreciate that. 
Yeah. And but my question is as far as the um or I get the removing construction, but um the soil, the soil you're saying the because we did place um soil above. Yeah, there's so, there's a there's a, there's a stockpile of excavated soil and vegetation on the rear of your lot. Oh, you mean the bags that were there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, all the way in the rear, that would have to come out. Okay. So let me ask you a question. So since um, I know that I I will still be able to place the pool closer to the house, out of the wetland area, that that we have there, that soil is what we're going to use to place at the bottom of the pool because that's part of the 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 project. Oh, I don't know what can we move that to. You you can you can remove that soil and keep it somewhere on your property, just not in the regulated area for later where you move the pool. We're looking at what has been disturbed in this okay. area that's shaded green um, that we're that we're talking about. All right, so you have the pictures, right? You have the pictures with you. Mm -hmm. Which page are you are we looking at? It says view of channel and stockpile looking east. We're starting with that right there. That would be page three of three. Page three of three. Okay, so it is Hold on, I'm translating for my significant other because he's the one that. Um, so it is like that is fine. So you're saying to remove that? How will we remove that? <laughs> Means and methods truly isn't up to us. I mean. How, how did it get placed there? You mean by the drench, right? In yeah. the back area. Mm -hmm. What we did was that we cut down the trees that were back there. Mm -hmm. Because that was, you know, those trees, the, the, the trees that are all the way back there going to Route 15. That's what we did. We cleaned that area with that. But we didn't um, place any soil there that we just... Um, we just cut down those trees so that it could look even. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mary Bell. It's Derek. Hi, Derek. Hi. Um, yeah, I think what I was referring to in my memo was it, 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 from that photo. It looked like some of the plants that were cut down were just thrown back there. And I know we talked. The, the channel was already there, but it looked like it had been, there'd been shovels taken out along the edges just to kind of clean it up. It looked uh -huh. like some of that excess material was there. So it's not a large pile. It just looked like some of the, the vegetation that was taken out and, and maybe a little bit of the soil from the channel was put there. So we're looking to have that, that so taken out and that be included in the restoration area. Okay. So you want the soil back on the, on the drench? No, uh, I'm not saying that's got to go back there. Just, it needs, it can't be left piled up in the wetlands. It's, I understand. you know, as it is right now, it's going to prevent any growth from coming up. So we need to take that out and have that part of the whole uh, restoration effort. Thank you. Okay, I understand. Yep. Hold on one second. Sí. 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 As well as the the construction material in that area. Okay. When what they um, which is the which is the, looks like the pool. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. we're gonna remove all that. Okay. So do I have um a date that you want to buy? Uh, I I. I not specifically. I mean, I, I think the town has provided you a day. So if the job can be completed by that day, that would be great. After the pool and stuff is removed, you'd probably scarify the area and apply your seed mix uh, by that September date, I think would be sufficient. Okay. Okay. So I want to ask you another question. I don't know if this has to do with you or if it has to do with a um, building and permit. Um, as far as um, placement for the pool, Mm -hmm. How many feet away from the house is the permitted area? That that would be 
the building department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah would be Mary Bell, um, as far as the, yeah, what we can handle where the pool is placed outside the wetland limits. Um, I think just to clarify, because this is a little bit unusual for the for the commission, so they understood mm. um, this particular plan, the one I had prepared dated July 15th, shows three different wetland limits. Yeah. Generally, our regulated area will be what is shown on the town inland wetland map. Um, in this instance, you can see where the line runs through the middle of the houses, um, <laughs> just based on visual field inspection. That's clearly not the wetland limit. I don't, I don't know if that's an error or that's an old uh, old limit that was there. Um, so that's that's one. The the other limit, two limits that are shown are in the back. Um, you see, there's one that's from the 1995 plot plan. Um, that was a more recent wetland limit that was shown on the plan. I mean, typically wetland limits that are you know 25 years old like that, we we would not consider to be um, still accurate. Uh, but I'm showing on the on the plan as a point of reference. And then I I noted a line that cuts. Um, from about 64 feet behind the house to about, <clears throat> excuse me, about 40 feet behind the house, that based on just looking at the 2017 aerial photos and being out in the field and kind of looking at the, uh, the, the color of the vegetation that's out there, that appears to me to be what the wetland has been historically. So, you know, I've been speaking with um, the applicant about the fact that, you know, we should come, she should come to see you and have the commission determine what limit we they you got you wanted to hold as the as the wetland limit so she can place her pool outside of that um my recommendation was to use the the line that's closest to the house which appears visually to be the wetland limit that's 64 feet and 40 feet off and give her the option if she wants to have it flagged maybe the actual wetland limit is further back and then she would have more room to do it but in the absence of flagging you know, we would have to utilize one of the three well limits shown as what we're considering the regulated area. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And just, Derek, it is conceivable if she were to go ahead and have it flagged as soil scientists to do the work, it is conceivable that it could in fact be moved closer to the house or something than the way, what you have now. So, um, it seems reasonable just to make a decision based upon what you've put out before us and, and go with it. Any other comments from the uh, commissioners? A uh, question or a statement, Brent, uh, to the group? <laughs> <laughs> kind of an observation, um, I, I guess. Um, <clears throat> It just so, it just seems to make sense to me. You know, the other one is both of the other uh, possible boundaries are just straight lines. So they seem like they're kind of, you know, just somebody said, okay, that's where the let ones are and just drew a line and uh, kind of regardless of the topography. Uh, so. so what you're saying, we, we, we identify one of those and give uh, the applicant the ability to uh, start what they need to do. Well, I, yeah, that was that was uh, his third. Derek's third point was, uh, you know, one of these three lines. Which one is it? It's up to you, commissioners, to figure this out. So then the applicant knows where to go. Sure. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, Brent. I like uh, making a a decision on what the line should be in moving forward for restoration. Uh, and uh, I do like the line that was drawn, that uh, 64 40 line. Because if the applicant were to get it flagged on her own at her own cost, it may move towards the house more. So, yeah, I agree. Any other comments? So this is something that the town will come over and do then? Is that what I'm understanding? Uh, I think, we, I mean, those are about the dimensions that you can hold off the back of your house. So um, I think we talked, I can give you a plan um, that's a little cleaner than this for your building permit application. And then you can draw the pool on somewhere outside of those limits where you'd like to do it. And then as part of the building permit application, 
it doesn't affect wetlands at that point and you know we can sign off on it that way but we wouldn't be necessarily coming out really to market for you uh, yeah. you know if you need some help with that okay. we can help you with it um that that would be fine too just let me know okay thank you Derek. i appreciate that Okay, seeing no other comments, do we have a uh, motion for application 737-21 with the consideration of the 64 and 70 line of wetlands? 40. 40, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can take a stab at that. Um, I move to approve application number 737-21, Bill Almonte, 47 Spruce Street, parcel number 121-032 for the removal of construction materials and to restore uh, regulated wetland and floodplain areas with using the approximate um, uh, field inspection of 71521, which identified the uh, 40 and 60 feet from the house. Do we have a second? I'll second it. This is Brent. Thank you, Brent. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. We thank you, Mirabel. Thank you. Have a good night. Am I able to uh, leave the meeting? Yes, you're all set. Thank you. All right. You guys have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Moving on to application 738 2151 Spruce Street. I believe that would be a Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we move on, uh, because it wasn't part of the original agenda, mm -hmm. as I received the materials um, earlier this week, that I think technically that has to be added to the agenda by a motion uh, and an approval by the commission, and then we can hear it. Okay. Uh, do I have a, a motion to add application 738-2151 Spruce Street um, to the agenda to hear it tonight? So move, Luke. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mary. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay, with that uh, passing to move on to the agenda, uh, if the applicant uh, can present to us, please. Yeah, my name is Eric Sullivan. I'm actually Maribel's neighbor. Uh, so we're kind of jointly in the same situation. I'm not building anything though. That's the only difference. Um, mm -hmm. When she, when Maribel, when they put their fence up, the, like the cattails, you know, the wetlands area by that little stream. Yeah. Um, it had like an outcropping and it flowed into her yard. But then when they cleared to put the pool up, I had this small corner triangle, like 15 by 15 by 15 that, um, just didn't look right. It didn't, you know, it didn't flow anymore the, with the, the line of the property. So I just took it upon myself to cut down those cattails, clear that. And I, I actually took the silt out of the little stream. This, you know, it's like what two to three feet wide. And I was, I get the silt from everybody upstream. So I've, I've been living there since 1996 and uh, I was that's actually the model home I purchased. And so it's a common occurrence for me to have to clean up the garbage that flows downstream from the 515. And at the same time, I, I basically, like you would do the Connecticut River, I dredge it. And I just take the silt that's in there and I throw it into the low spots on my lawn, you know, which is to the left and right of that little stream. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've been doing that since 96. And I, the only reason I, I, I cut those cattails because you know just didn't look right anymore. And I was plan my plan was to I took that uh, silt, kind of level it off somewhat, and it's still a low spot, but it's definitely lower than the stream by a good foot. Uh, the stream has like kind of a bank that we've built up over the years, so nothing enters the stream from my yard. It's just from upstream, and um, so I was, my plan was to plant grass seed in that little triangle by her fence and to, to just have the lawn all be one piece and not have this one spot of cattails uh, that kind of looked out of place. 
And I, for the little amount that I did, I didn't think again that I needed a permit for it, but I did go down and paid for that uh, Monday and filled out the application and did what I had to do. What happened was when they were inspecting for Mirabelle's pool, they looked over and said, oh, what's going on over here? You know, and that's how, that's why I'm here now. So I just want to, I'm hoping that you're going to say it's just so minor that we can just let Eric plant some lawn there and, uh, that's that would be the end of it. Mm -hmm. That's my wish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, do, do you have do you have the pictures in front of you that from the I, that I received from the town? I do have pictures in front of me. I, you're talking yeah. about. Uh, I see a picture with the uh, white stockade fence on my left. Some cattail yeah. still there, disturbed area. I see upstream. Yeah. Uh, there is an area where the water steps down. I see the silt fence that you installed. Right. Uh, again, un unfortunately, that is a regulated area. Um, right. And um, whenever working, doing anything in the regulated area, it's supposed to be reviewed. Right. I understand that. I should have got a permit first. I just thought it was a small area that wouldn't require it. Mm -hmm. It actually looks more that I actually put silt farther up onto my lawn because, like I said, it was a low spot and it was just you know flooding mm -hmm. uh, due to the construction next door. So I, it looks like I disturbed a larger area than I really did. I, I probably put silt another five feet or so farther onto my lawn, trying to make it all all level. You know, because mm -hmm. what was happening was when they did their construction there, they blocked off the stream, and it was hitting the dead end and coming back and flooding my whole area like I, I you might have one of the pictures where i tried to mow the lawn in that area and it's just you know the lawnmower was sinking in it so but since then they put the stream back the way it was in 96 and um where so the water can flow over to folly brook like it, it always did so now i don't have that flooding anymore yes i checked it out when we had that big rain last week and it was you know everything was fine but like I got that silt barrier fence up, but that's actually, like I said, that's silt's not going to come out of my yard and go into the stream because the, the yard is lower than the stream, you know, it has a bank. I don't know. Okay. I, I, don't know I, I try to give you as many pictures so you can see what I was trying to describe. Mm -hmm. No, I think you did a good job doing that. It's just that we have an area now that we need to discuss and how we're going to get that uh, right. resolved, how we're going to get that restored, how how the commission would like mm -hmm. to see that restored. Um, I'm not really too concerned what you've done in years past in the wetlands because uh, that's not really what's in front of us right now. What's in front of us is that triangular piece that's been disturbed. Um, right. Right. Do we have any other, do we have any comments from any uh, commissioners? But yeah, if I, I might ask here, the way I understand it is that there were other wetlands, plants, cattails, stuff that was there, and that's already been taken down. And the app by the application, you say remove cattails and plant lawn see in this. It, to complete the backyard line, lawn. So you want to take out more of the cattails, the tall grasses to put in a regular lawn? Is that is that what you got in mind? No, I actually, I only want to put lawn on the, my backyard side of the stream. The other side where the cattails, we just cut a little bit back so we could walk along the edge and not fall in while we were trying to work. And, you know, you know and like I said, it's an ongoing process to have to clean up garbage that flows downstream. So I want a little, you know, walkway. I wasn't plan, planning on putting any grass on that side of it, on the north side, just uh, the, the lawn area by that white fence, that little, that triangle there. And then, so the lawn will go, right, you know, right up to the edge. And that the, the natural vegetation just grows on that bank. Like within a month, you'll, it will be green, even if I didn't do anything. It's, it's, it's very fertile, that the silt that I throw mm -hmm. down there. But that's all. The only seating I was talking about was on the uh, south side of the stream, towards my house, by that fence. Uh, let, let me ask you this: Was the uh, wetlands vegetation, the grasses and things like that, all the way up to the bank on the north side at one time? Uh, 
Um, I mean, I'm looking at there's a the picture I'm well, looking yeah, at. Well, when I yeah, yeah. When, when I moved in, uh, Kokomo was the builder. He yeah. actually had it cleared about a good 30 feet farther back. I just didn't want that much lawn, so I only had you know seeded where there's that tree with the bird feeders yeah. on it. That that little area there, and I let the rest of it just grow back naturally, you know. And up, and then I had it, like I said, up to where the fence got put in, and then I said, "Well, let me just clean that corner out." But it actually was cleared much farther back when I moved in there in '96. And they told they told us, you know, it was basically there's like I don't know if you could tell from the pictures, there's a few trees there, um, a little beyond where the cattails are. Uh, that that's about where he had it cleared out to like probably another 30 feet or so. And they, they told us at that point, we had a meeting and they said, you know, that this was wetlands we raised up, you know, so you won't get flooded. Uh, the town required them to raise up the grade and anything to that, where that clearing was, he said, beyond that, you can't, you know, disturb it. And also that they mentioned how the Northeast utilities had a, a easement there. Yeah. You know, like you can't do anything back there. So I pretty much followed what I was told uh, since I've been there. And like that stream is the same as it was back then, all the way up. If you go up the street, it's, you know, it goes through all the backyards. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's spruce. Well, I guess with that said, uh, Commissioner Cenzaro, do you have uh, any comments? Uh, no, I'm just looking at uh, at uh, the note from Derek, and it seems like that may be the directive we take. No, I'm I'm good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, I'm I'm looking at it where we need to restore this, um, get something established. Um, as suggested, putting the wetlands mixture on it, um, not cutting further into it to add more lawn, um, just to really just to address that triangle, that disturbed area. Um, I'm also looking to see uh, how the wetland mapping should be adjusted um, as the applicant before him, if we should look at that 100 foot to 114 foot from the property corner that was suggested with our motion. Um, if we can put this to a vote to include that. Anyone willing to make a motion? Uh, Brian, that that uh, figure you just gave us, I see that in Derek's memo. Is, is there a map somewhere that I might have missed it? Yes. If we, go to, if, if we go to that map here, that is. Uh... That was issued after the initial packet. I emailed you uh, separately. Uh, I believe it was maybe just yesterday. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Plan. Okay, so that that's the so what we're looking at that particular line is what that was something that was done before. That was a field observation, as was, just to like it? the uh, applicant before. The one forty-seven, yeah, same one. It, it is a field observation. Derek, correct me if I was wrong. That is your field observation, correct? He's muted. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. So, yeah, so there's a line from the 1995 plan, similar to the last one. In, yeah. in that case, it was further back from the house. In this case, that appears to be a, a little closer to the house than what it appears to be as wetland limit in the field. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I was indicating in my memo, you know, generally 
if there's a wetlands disturbance, it's got to be restored or mitigated. Um, yeah. So a couple options you may want to consider is putting back the area that was just recently disturbed as wetlands, or you know it appears historically maybe there was wetlands on the north side of the channel that's that's been you know reused or has become lawn now. You know you could have him mitigate the area lost on the south side of the channel and put that same area back somewhere on the north side of the channel. Um, if you know that that would be under the purview of the commission as well. Um, provide at least mitigation for the same area that's lost is, a, is an option that could be considered. Mm -hmm. So what you're suggesting is that the area like where the tree is in the birdhouse on the north side of the stream, uh, Lou's saying, no, that's not what you're saying. Yeah, no, that's what he's, that's what he's saying. <laughs> you're right. Oh. So you, you possibly to leave the front part on the south side as is a possible way to mitigate that loss would be to go on the other side and have that come back up as wetlands, grasses, and things like that. I mean, that's allowable. Um, you know, wetland impacts are allowed, but generally the requirement is they have to mitigate with at least the right. same area. So right. I'm just putting that out there as a, something to consider. Um, alternatively, I mean, my first suggestion was have just replaced what was just recently disturbed. Um, but I'm just putting it out there that it's another consideration if you wanted to go that route could be yeah. uh, could be done as well. I wouldn't have any problem putting like the square feet what I have on the lawn side on the south side and just add more wetland, you know, uh, foliage, whatever, to the north side to, to make up for the difference. The, not a, it'll grow back on its own without being much, pretty much doing anything. But I could, uh, you know, I could plant some, you know, whatever it takes to put it back the way it was on the north side for the make up for the difference. Would there be a need to use those particular kinds of grasses that you recommend, Derek, to meet? I guess into things like grasses, I'm not all that familiar. Those sound, I mean, sound those like things special. Those cattails or whatever the proper name is, they grow back like like weeds. You know, they they just spread and spread. And so, I mean, if I were to do not, if I were just to let's say pull up the lawn area, and they would they would spread on their own. You know, by next year you would see like I never had lawn there. You know, wherever I I just let them because you have to actually keep on top of them to keep them from coming up the, up the yard. I still get them in the middle of my yard to this day, you know, if you, if you let the grass grow too long. Yeah. I think if it continues so, to be mowed, you, you'll keep it, keep it down. It'll be more yeah. like a lawn area. Um, I mean, to answer the question, sometimes there's been a mitigation where we have wetland plantings with specific um, plants. Other times, um, you know, if it's more, it depends on the type of application and where it's located. We just will allow topsoil with a wetland seed mix and, and let it come back. Um, you know, right. I'd recommend doing right. that to encourage the growth. But as the owner saying, you know, it looks like that area to the north of the channel has been mowed and it keeps staying that way. You know, if it's left, if it's reseeded with some wetland mix, the area that you require, um, I suspect it will come back as wetlands eventually. Yeah, it's always... Uh... It doesn't dry out over there, so everything grows real fast. Yeah, as I as I look at one of the pictures, it seems like where he does mow, where that little tree is. I mean, as I look down past that, uh, it seems like okay, he's got lawn. The next door neighbor up has got probably correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like it could be wetlands, um, vegetation, and stuff like that. So you kind of cut into. Um, what, what should be growing there naturally. I don't know, just it seems like yeah, it's, not a, it's, not an, it's not an even line. To, to, if you look up the, the street, everybody's backyard, you know, yeah. some go back farther, other ones are not as much. I, I personally feel like I did probably as little than anybody on the whole street as far as disturbing anything, you know, for that little the area around the uh, 
birdhouses there or bird feeders. Uh, even at that, you still get the problem with the um, the south side where you've taken out a lot of the grasses that were there. So it, it looks kind of ugly. Derek, Derek, correct me if I'm wrong. Were you were you suggesting that we allow um, the south south side to be seeded as is lawn and then uh, recover on the north side, as we just said, at least that amount of disturbance, if not more? That's the other way around. No, I was, I was saying the area that's been recently disturbed on the south side, it could either be required to be put back as wetlands, which is what the owner wasn't looking to do, or you could consider allowing him to plant seed and let that be lawn, uh, similar to some of the other properties uh, you noted next door, where it seems lawn up to the south side of the channel, and then you know have him uh, restore a square foot area equal to or larger than what's been removed on the south side as well and on the north side. So right. he would have lawn to, to the channel, and then additional area behind the channel that is pretty much lawn now would, would come back as wetland to whatever area you, you, you decide. Okay, I didn't say that, that's what I meant to say, thank you. It seems like every time we've mitigated or, or allowed that, we've always had a drawn, a plan, a planting schedule of, of plants. Yeah. Um, and if the owner would, uh, want that or accept that, he would have to come back and present that to us if he'd like to mitigate. Yeah, it's not a problem. I could draw out what, you know, I'll just figure out, I'll measure out the square feet that's disturbed on the north side. But what I say, it actually looks a lot worse because I put silt on top of my lawn trying to level it off. But, and then uh, make a drawing of the back, uh, the, south, the north side as to what would go back as uh, wetlands to mm -hmm. make up for the, the amount that was on the south side. Right, and you would, that you would include, be hard to do. You would include yeah. the quantity of in the uh, variety of species. Right. Okay. And uh, yeah. I do it as soon as possible. You know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. What do you have, uh, you have a meeting every month? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that, Brent. Yeah, you know, I, I I totally agree with what you were saying, Brian. I think he he needs to come back with a with a better application of this. I mean, the the thing that says, for example, he says remove cattails and uh, you know I wouldn't vote for that. Um, mm -hmm. There are some ideas here that he might be able to do something with, but he's got to put it into a you know, his request and and present it to us. Okay. So with that said, do we want to table this until next month? I think, well, my opinion would be that would be ordinarily the way we would handle it. Mm -hmm. it. As far as when I said remove cattails, that I was that was like after the fact that I was just stating what was already done. Really, mm -hmm. I have no intention of removing anything else. Okay. Okay, it seems like we discussed two things. We discussed moving forward with a conservation mix on the south side with uh, changing some of the, or adding into the notes, the field observation uh, of the wetlands. And then we have another uh, option of mitigating the north side equal to or greater than the south side, what was disturbed. With that being said, we would need a, a, a plan or drawing uh, detailing what is proposed. Um, do we have a motion for any of the two options or a third option would be a motion to, to, in, to table? If you're looking for a plan, then we have to table it, correct? Yeah, I think so. If we're, if we're not looking for a plan and we're just gonna do what Eric had uh, stated where we leave the south side to be grass seed and the north side equal or um, or more in disturbed area to be let to grow back with whatever mix is so uh, identified, then then we would be able to make that motion tonight. Correct.
Derek, do you have any uh, of, of those two options? Do you have any um, input on that? Which one you'd like? From the town's perspective? Well, I, I would say um, in the case of the previous application, mm -hmm. they are restoring what was recently disturbed. Uh, so we were saying, you know, a, a wetland seed mix and some topsoil would be sufficient. I would say that would be um, a sufficient solution on the south side of the channel where it's been disturbed recently as, a, as an option. If, if, we are, if you're gonna allow mitigation, and as the chairman pointed out, typically with mitigation, we get a plan showing the area that's gonna be mitigated and what's going to be planted. Um, a lot of times that's more than just a wetland seed mix that could be a combination of that and you know, a, a number of wetland plants. Um, I would say if you're going to go the mitigation route and allow it to remain or to be converted to lawn on the south side of the channel and then have some mitigation area on the north side of the channel, then I would recommend, you know, tabling and looking for a, a plan from the applicant. I think, it, you know, I think maybe the, the applicant can speak to if that's really, if that's what he wants lawn up to the south side of the channel, then that way he might be looking at that and tabling and, and bringing us a plan next month. Mr. That's Sullivan, fine you, with me. Yeah. You, you have a preference I to. I, I had hoped to get this the lawn planted, but I don't care. I mean, what's another month? It's, you know, it's not affecting me really any, in any way or, or the property. It's just uh, I'll, I'll draw something up and uh, we'll have a. Do I, uh, would I. Is this the last Zoom meeting or do we uh, or you don't know yet? With hopes that this would be the last Zoom meeting, would be yeah. be meeting in person or next one. All right. Uh, well, like I said, I could just uh, draw something up, and then next month, uh, you know, I would assume that it would be approved because you know, it's, I would just be drawing something what we just discussed, you know, just putting it in writing. Yeah, Mr. Sullivan, I can I can help you out with that. Um, maybe we should talk. Um, you know, we could talk next week, and I can help you with kind of what what plantings you may want to propose and the area we'd be looking at, or I think what the commission right. would be looking for. So I can help you out with that. Yeah, I want to make sure it's right so we don't have to keep going over it. Just get it done once. So Brian, uh, you want I'm, to, I'm good with that. You a motion to a table? Yeah, we'll, uh, let's make a motion to table this to next month when the applicant comes in with the mitigation plan. Yep, so moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you, Mr. Sullivan. I, I, you know what? I, I had one question I forgot to ask you earlier. Where that fence is, mm -hmm. I never saw any surveyors, uh, markings, or anything. I, I used to know where, I know where the property line starts in the front of the house, but I lost track of where it ends in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Is is when you guys go back out to re-inspect, is there any way somebody could stick a rebar back in the ground like it used to be? I don't know. I, I lost track of the thing over the years as far as uh, east and west where the property line is. Yeah, the, the town doesn't do uh, you know, you layout don't. <laughs> like that for, for, for private. Um, so that's something you'd have to have done yourself if you wanted to have it reestablished. Oh, okay. I just the, lines, the lines I shown on the be plans. The lands, the lines, the property lines shown on the plans that I gave you are, are approximate. I mean, that's pretty close usually, but um, if you really want to know for sure, you'd have to have a surveyor do that. Yeah, I'm just worried in case I don't plan on going anywhere, but in case I sold the house, I didn't want to find out that the fence is a foot into my property or, you know what I mean? I just want to that, get that and right. The, and the fence is, I was going to say the fence is something yeah. that the you know building department doesn't issue permits for. That's usually a private matter between the two property owners as to uh, you know where the line is and where the fence should be placed. Okay. Hey, I talked to her. Yeah. yeah, she said she measured off the house, and I said, okay, you know, I would have felt better if I saw a surveyor out there. All right, I'll, I'll talk so to Maribel sure. about it. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, moving on to the conservation portion, uh, commission portion of this, uh, seeing none. Um, 
we have the organizational meeting. As you know, without Jim, we are looking to nominate an elect of a chairman. Um, do we have any, do we have a discussion for that before we make a motion? Is there anybody that's interested in taking the role of chairman? Brian, I would suggest you, um, if you're interested. I knew that was coming though. I know. I'll second <laughs> that. <laughs> um, I appreciate it and I, and I, and I thank you guys. Um, there's just a little reservation with that, with uh, uh, that I've expressed to Derek. Um, I, I, I just never want my occupation to ever be an issue. Um, put anybody in a situation, the commission, myself or the town. Um, that would be my really only reservation um, with that. Well, I, I think you uh, are professional enough to know when to recuse yourself, so I have no yeah. issue with that. Yeah, you've done that from time to time, so we, we know that you can take care of that. Okay. Uh, and, you know, with, with your experience, you know, and you've been around a commission for a number of years now, too, that, you know, you know how it goes, so... Well, I, I appreciate those words, gentlemen. Um, we have a vote. Do we have a vote to uh, elect me as the chairman? Yeah, I motion uh, the Brian DiCaccio uh, be confirmed as the uh, chairman. Okay, I'll second it again. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, if I, if, so technically, if I don't vote, we can't do it, huh? <laughs> that is not enough. <laughs> yeah. uh, again, thank you, uh, Commission. Um, moving on, we have the nomination and election of a vice chairman. Uh, do we have a discussion or a nomination? Well, I want to, uh, um, I, 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 he's going to kill me, but Brent, are you available to uh, take over that position he's, he's he said perfect. i know how to be vice chair i guess so thanks to you <laughs> you taught me well uh, you, you were you were great brian if he accepts it which it sounds like he is i think you're going to be in good hands and you'll have a, a, a very good uh, right hand right there mm. yes so that's great i, I I nominate Brent Owen for um, vice chairman. Mm -hmm. do, do we have a second? I second it. Okay, Mary, thank you. Um, can we put this to a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. All right. Appreciate the all second right. shot at it. Thank you, Brent. Moving on, uh, authorization of uh, Derek Greger to sign notices of the commission. Do we need, we don't need, uh, do we need to put that, uh, we need to put that just to a vote, correct? Or we need a motion? Hmm. Oh, we've made a motion in the past. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was gonna say you did with the previous two items, so I, I would just make a motion for the next. I mean, yeah, we've done it year to year. Okay. I'll make so the motion. That's... Yeah. I can make the motion to authorize Derek Gregor to sign notices of the commission. All right. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the appointment of Derek Greger as a designated interim agent of the commission as well. Do we have a motion? A motion to appoint um, uh, the appointment of Derek uh, Greger as designated interim agent of the commission. Do we have a second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Moving on to general min minutes, the approval of minutes dated May 19, 2021. We'll take a minute to review them. If we haven't. So we're good with four of the six. Yeah. All right. good. So, do, so we, do we have enough to make the vote on that? Yeah, we've got four. 
Okay. All right, do we have a motion for the approval of the minutes? Motion to approve. Right. We have a second. I'll second it. I second. Oh, Mary. Right. Mary will second that. <laughs> all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, number two for staff, uh, for business staff update regarding enforcement of erosion controls for disturbances, um, less than 0.5 acres. Yes, you may remember from um, a few meetings ago, uh, we had a resident from Pheasant Hill uh, come in who expressed some concerns with an abutting owner who had done a regraded and reseeded their backyard, which was less than a half acre of disturbance, therefore it didn't trigger an inland wetlands permit. Uh, his concern was he had erosion onto his property because the proper erosion controls were not installed um, by the owner upstream. Um, so he had to ask, you know, for us to look at ways that we might be able to have some enforcement authority in those instances. Um, so I had included in the packet, um, excerpts from the 2002 Connecticut guidelines for soil erosion and sediment control and highlighted some sections that um, just define where the half acre came from. I think um, you know that's pretty standard throughout the state that that is the threshold. Um, you know it, it has to do with you know the amount of area obviously that gets disturbed and the potential for issues uh, but also trying to be reasonable because, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, do yard work that is a lot less than that and could cause a problem, but, you know, we don't have the staff necessarily in the time to, you know, be monitoring all of that activity. Um, so I provided that just as a background, but that's, that's stated in there, I think by state statute, um, they had some excerpts uh, from the uh, state uh, statutes in there as well that talked about that. So that's where it was generated from originally. Um, uh, Previous chairman, uh, Jim Culpa had looked at our property maintenance in our, in our code, chapter 122, and uh, you know, contacted me with some suggestions about maybe looking at, at the zoning enforcement officer and property maintenance officer, who is one person um, that works in the building department right now and see, because they do have enforcement authority, they do have the ability to find um, for you know a variety of issues, so I included that chapter in there, highlighted some of the important uh, that went with it. You know, he was suggesting the the blighted premises, which um, you know generally refers to properties that are not maintained or taken care of. That's usually when he gets involved and um, you know gets in touch with the owners and tries to have it addressed. Uh, but there are other instances where you know people allow their bushes to grow, overgrow the sidewalk too much. Um, they may be infecting the sidewalk. They may be affecting sight lines. Property maintenance officer gets involved in those things. So, you know, it, it wouldn't be unreasonable maybe to consider having him also have the ability, if there's a complaint and an issue like that, to be able to go out and have some enforcement authority that we or myself or whoever the agent is that does not have based on the inland wetlands regulation. Um, I had spoken with uh, the, the CEO and the PMO. Um, like I said, it's the same person. He you know, thought that was reasonable. He didn't seem to have any issues with it. Um, you know, if we, if that's something um, you think would be beneficial, then I, I will, I'll bring it back to him and the town manager uh, because it's an ordinance. It's something that would have to go through the town manager's office and be approved by town council. Um, they did just recently go through the property maintenance uh, section and make some changes in the last few months. Um, but that certainly could be done again if we, you know, if we feel it's something we want to recommend and pursue. So, you know, the person responsible for doing it didn't seem to have an issue. Um, I suspect um, the town manager wouldn't either. You know, one thing that when we originally uh, were speaking with that particular property owner, he was referring to erosion issues. Um, he has contacted me since asking about, you know, who handles drainage issues. And, and that's another thing that we deal with a lot is uh, people will take their roof leaders and their downspouts and they'll pipe them right to their neighbor's property and end the pipe there and cause problems. Similarly, we're left with a situation where I don't really have any, any authority to enforce something. Usually what I'll do as a courtesy is send the, the person that's doing it a letter stating it's come to our attention, they're causing a problem. 
you know, be a good neighbor and, you know, work with your neighbor and you know, address a disconnect the balance spouts or the sump pump or whatever they're doing. Um, so we have a similar, so there's really two things. One could be the erosion control issue, which was initially brought up, but that property owner I know also had problems with drainage. That was what we originally discussed a couple of years prior when it was happening that the, the, the flow of the drainage patterns had been changed and affected his property. Um, so I would say if we're going to go that route, I would like to include some kind of enforcement action for that as well. Um, something that has more teeth, because like I said, I, you know, I do a courtesy letter, but a lot of times that's where it ends. And then people are calling me a year or two later saying, well, nothing's been done. And then it becomes a private matter where you know, I tell them you, you have to get an attorney or you, you can't work it out with your neighbor. And it goes down that route. So you know, maybe having, having someone in town that has a little bit more teeth to, to try and get compliance um, and avoid that route, um, you know, I think wouldn't be bad. Thing. it would help me out on the engineering side because we like I said we get a lot of those complaints and calls every year and um, you know again I don't have that enforcement capability so I was just bringing it back to the commission because we had um, told the the resident that had come in a couple of meetings ago that we would you know pursue this and see what we could do I know um, chairman Culpa was you know interested in really trying to follow through on that and, and suggested this so I'm just bringing it to you as a point of discussion to see if that's, you know, what your thoughts are one way or the other. And, um, you know, then we can figure out how to proceed. I, I like the other, uh, the idea of another set of eyes to help enforcement. Um, how, how do we keep this going uh, besides discussion? I mean, we, we will discuss amongst ourselves tonight a little, you know, with our, with our commission tonight, but what do we do after that if the commission agrees to you know continue moving forward I, I think if you if, if that's how you felt and you agreed that was a reasonable uh, path forward then um, I, I'll work with the, the property maintenance officer and the town manager and um, see what we can do to move it forward uh, I think the next step is really going to the town manager you know explaining what what the concerns are what we're looking to do and you know just seeing if he's agreeable. If he is, then it would be a matter of um, him or myself going to town council to modify the ordinance. Does any other commissioners uh, like that idea or have any yeah, comments on that idea? Yeah, as much as I, I don't like adding, uh, you know, new regulations, I think um, having been in town for all these years and worked, I hate it when somebody's doing something in a yard and disturbing and forcing water onto someone else's yard or, you know, so forth and so on. So I, I think giving them more in a town, more teeth to enforce that would be a good idea. Does any other commissioners have uh, anything to add? Okay, so it looks like we're gonna continue it, continue that ball rolling, Derek, with uh, the enforcement of erosion controls and stuff. At, you know, appointing someone to just have another set of eyes. Okay, then I'll uh, I'll take that back to the town manager, and uh, you know, I'll report back to you um, in the future as to how that's progressing. Mm -hmm. And for correspondence, no action required. Has everyone seen the? Resonation letters and the appointment. Welcome, uh, Mr. Chase. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, Welcome. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I think I had my mic on mute for part of it, so sorry <laughs> on that. <laughs> Not a problem. Hopefully, this should be our last Zoom meeting and we can be in person. Very good. Yeah, I, I think Mary has been out of, uh, I don't think we've seen her yet. Right, right. <laughs> I think we've been here at the whole Zoom meeting. She might still bring her phone with her. Yeah. yeah. I don't even see her picture down there. Oh, there she is. No. Well, already does, uh, does anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? Well, Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right. Um, we put that to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty.
All right, good luck, everybody. Go board, William. Thank you. Okay. See you right. next month. Okay. Thank you, guys. Good vacation, Derek. Good night. Good night. night. Thank you, everyone. Good night. And I'll uh, I'll get in touch with you next month. Good night. Thank you. Bye.